IM F1H20 World Championship heads once more to Liuzhou, China, where the 2014 season kicks into high gear. All the big names are here to do battle as part of the Liuzhou Aqua Speed Festival that also includes F4 Racing and the Aquabike Grand Prix. The city of Liuzhou provides a stunning backdrop to this event. biggest city in Guangxi province, Liuzhou is located in the heart of one of China's most picturesque regions. The lush, verdant countryside is dotted with the distinctive limestone karsts of this part of China, through which winds the mighty Liu River. Liuzhou has a tropical climate with a stunning array of flora and fauna that are a testament to the rich biological diversity of this region. Even the city of Liuzhou itself is full of greenery, with parks and tree-lined avenues throughout the city, not to mention some wonderful temples and monuments that shed light on this city's rich and ancient history. But make no mistake, there's nothing provincial about Liuzhou. This is a bustling, booming, fast-paced city of nearly four million people. Liuzhou is a feast of lights, sounds, colors, cultures, and people. The city center has a 24-hour beat to it. The food, the shopping, and of course, the wild, sexy, thumping nightlife all make this one of China's most electric cities. This marks the 20th year for F1H20 in China, a landmark anniversary for the sport founded by the head of H2O Racing, Niccolo de San Germano. I'm very happy and proud to be the witness of the changes of this country in 20 years, particularly in the world of sport. You know, uh, 20 years ago we would never thought that we could have a Formula One Chinese team. We would have never thought that uh, they would build uh, a, a water stadium uh, like the one they've done here in uh, Liuzhou in the last uh, four years just for Formula One. It's unbelievable when China want to do something how they can do it and how successful they can be. Now let's take a look at what happened in the last round in Qatar. The season kicked off in the pearl of the Middle East, Doha, Qatar. In qualifying, Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden drove a stunning lap and got pole position only to relinquish it following an engine change, thus giving pole to Sami Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team. The Team Qatar drivers, defending world champion Alex Carella and Sean Torrente didn't wait long to pounce and grabbed one and two as they left Celio in their wake at the start. Things went from bad to worse for Celio as he was soon out of the race with a broken engine. Torrente led the race ahead of his teammate Corella until the 31st lap when a steering problem ended his race. Seemingly a recurring curse for Torrente who's had to bow out of many a race that he's led. Corella never looked back, winning the Grand Prix of Qatar with Philip Schiap of CTIC China team runner-up and Duarte Benavente of F1 Atlantic team third, his best ever result. There are 18 drivers from nine teams gearing up for the Grand Prix of China. Alex Carella is the man to beat in China, vying for a historic third Chinese Grand Prix title in a row. He has a... Oh. ...brand 
brand new and improved boat, but it may also prove to be his Achilles heel as he needs time to adjust. This year will be different. We have a new boat, new setup. This is the first time we will put uh, the boat in the water, so let's see, let's hope to win the third in a row. This could be a possible advantage to his teammate and defending world runner-up Sean Torrente, who needs to put the mechanical gremlins behind him. Yeah, the opening round went really, really good for about, I don't know, 98% of the weekend, and then the last uh, seven laps we had an issue, so we weren't able to finish, but that's racing, so we're going to come here and uh, try and dig ourselves out of a hole. The locals will be cheering on their very own team, CTIC China. Their ace driver, the highly technical and ever consistent Philip Schiap, looking to build on his runner-up finish in round one. Of course, I, I want to win. I like you too. I like this race. Uh, and uh, this circuit is for me uh, as a technical circuit and I like it very well. He races alongside his young Chinese teammate, Zhang Ziwei, a.k.a. Liu Zhang. Two-time world champion Sammy Celio also has a new Baba boat to get familiarized with. Biggest change is the safety. Safety is much better here in this boat. It's much stronger boat. Of course, different measurement, and uh, we think it should be much faster, but let's see. The test of what we did in Italy went well. We was, uh, I was very happy with it, but uh, of course, the race condition and the race place is always different. Back to upset everybody's best laid plans for a win is Team Abu Dhabi with veteran driver Thani al Kamzi, a former champion here, and the talented Ahmed al Hamali. While Team Sweden features newcomer Jesper Force, stepping up from F4 to race with teammate Jonas Anderson. Also back are Caldwell Racing, with their new boat designs and outboard engines, with Thomas Cermak returning to F1 H2O, racing alongside Ivan Brigada. Caldwell introduced four-stroke engines to F1 H2O, and two years of racing and research has led to the first major evolution in their goal to create a four-stroke platform that can beat the two-strokes. The course in Liuzhou is a technical six-pin course with one right and five left-hand turns. It's very challenging, there's the long straights, very, very fast turn, and then there's the part what is very tricky, the short, uh, short straight and tight turns. So it's very difficult to find a good setup and you need to really choose where you need to be fast. Qualifying determines the starting grid for the race. It's divided into three sessions with 12 boats from Q1 qualifying for Q2 and then the final six boats getting the course to themselves for a final shootout that will determine the pole position. Unpredictable conditions during the two practice sessions have made setup choice a challenge wind blew real hard and uh, so we're really scrambling. We're lucky that the boat itself is running good mechanically, everything's really good, it's fast. Um, so hopefully we can do a little more testing in Q1. But we're definitely not sure of what we're going to run yet still and qualifying starting in about five minutes. So um, it, the course is really challenging with the crosswind from the yellow to the orange down here, turn one, the boat does not like it at all. It wants to blow over, it wants to, it wants to scrub, it's, it's really, really a handful. So the key is to get from yellow to the orange clean and I think the rest of it's okay. In Q1, Duarte Benevente of F1 GC Atlantic team just qualified in 11th ahead of Philip Roms of Matt Croc Baba Racing. Moritz Stromoy fought till the final seconds to make it into Q2, but she was unable to better Roms's time. Also out in Q1 was Swedish rookie Jesper Force, Bartek Marsuek, Zhang Ziwei, and the two Caldwell drivers, Thomas Cermak and Ivan Brigada. Q2 saw lots of drama. Philip Schiap, always a favorite in the final round, had battery problems, and though the team hustled, it was of no use. Ahmed Al Hamali was also out with electrical problems, and his boat almost caught on fire. New boat, new wire 
Yes, everything's brand new, but I'm not lucky. I don't think I'm lucky. Everything are new. Then Torrente crashed out. I honestly don't know. It just unloaded. I told you that was the hard part right there. It wasn't supposed to be that hard. But I'm trying to get it back out. I can just get a lap. Just transfer to two, three. We're fast enough. I just need to get a lap. Hard as they tried, Torrente's engine was waterlogged and unable to continue. Alex Carella set the fastest time, but Sammy Celio only barely qualified in sixth, bumping down Eric Stark. Contando qualified for Q3 along with Yusuf Al Rabayan, Jonas Anderson, Duarte Benevente, and Celio. Q3, the final shootout, where drivers vie for the all important pole position. First out was Sammy Celio, who has 22 career pole positions to his name. He overcame his QT jitters to set an exceptional time of 45.99 seconds. Next out was Duarte Benevente, followed by Jonas Anderson, both unable to unseat Celio from provisional pole. Next up, Yusuf Al Rubayan. He was quick around the course and everyone held their breath. He set a time of 47.83, which put him in provisional second behind Celio. Contando went out for pole, but he was only able to set a time of 49.20, dropping him to fifth with one driver left to go. Last man out, Alex Carella. It would be another nail-biting qualifying showdown between the 11 pole winning Italian and the 22 pole winning Celio. Which man would prove the victor? Carella's new boat was fast and smooth, and the two-time defending world champion was flawless. Corella drove like a man possessed. Celio held his breath. There it is, his first lap, 44.60, a second and a half faster than Celio, the fastest lap of the day. Corella picked up his 12th pole position. Okay, we was with the new boat uh, and uh, really happy for it. We did a great in the top qualifier, we were sure it was a fast boat, but not like this, I mean, now we are really happy. We find really the perfect setup, everything okay. The third pole, the consecutive pole here in China, so I really love this place. There are the results. Corella with pole ahead of Celio, then Al Rabayan, Benevente, Anderson, and Cantando starting in sixth. With the day's racing over, teams and drivers kick back to unwind, let loose, and enjoy themselves out on the town. Race day, 18 drivers from 10 countries and 9 teams ready to do battle on the Liu River. There was tension before the race and the wind also picked up, possibly complicating team setup strategies and making conditions that much trickier on an already technical and erratic course. With a final countdown underway, thousands of spectators waited with bated breath for the Grand Prix of China to get underway. Carella nabbed his 12th career pole the day before. Celio is right behind him on the starting grid, followed by the two F1 Atlantic drivers, Al Rubayan and Benevente. Stark seventh, Shiap eighth ahead of the two Abu Dhabi drivers, and Sean Torrente starting way down in 15th position. The countdown is on, just seconds to go. The China Grand Prix is underway. A flying start from Yusuf Al Rabayan and Alex Carella, who leaves Celio lagging to the first turn boy. Sean Torrente sandwiched between the Abu Dhabi boats and Philip Roms on his starboard, who leaves Torrente in his spray. Carella on the inside, first to the turn alongside Al Rabayan, followed by Celio. <laughs> Collision. 
Duarte Benevente collides with Contando of Motorglass F1 team. Terrible luck for Benevente, who qualified in fourth place on the starting grid. But his teammate Al Rubayan is off to a great start in second position right behind Corella. Eric Stark of Team Nautica also has a great start, finding himself in fourth position behind Sammy Celio. There's Benevente without his cowling, heading back in. At the head of the field, Alex Corella has opened a three-second lead over Al Rubayan. Behind Jonas Anderson is a battle for sixth between Francesco Cantando and Philip Schiap. The Frenchman gets the better of the Italian, who's bumped down to seventh, and Schiap pursues Jonas Anderson in fifth. Further back, Sean Torrente has moved up to 10th position and he's trying to pass Moritz Stromoy, the driver he collided with in Portugal three years ago. As they enter turn number one, Torrente stays on the outside, maintaining his speed. In the clear water on the outside line, he passes Stromoy. Now Torrente bears down on Ahmed Alhamali of Team Abu Dhabi and Philip Schiap, who seems to be coming off the pace. And he does it. He passes Shiap before turn three. Torrente then goes head to head with Ahmed Alhamali. Alhamali puts up a fight, but Torrente is just too fast. Torrente then sets his sights on Alhamali's teammate, Daniel Kamzi, who won here in 2011. Torrente is known for his no holds barred racing style. And though it's got him in trouble in the past, including some big scrapes and even a suspension, his competitiveness is what defines him as a top racer. Torrente takes the inside line, trying to get the speed he needs to take on Alcamzi, but Alcamzi smokes him on that 640 meter straightaway to boy number three. Alcamzi's going to prove a hard nut to crack, but Torrente is not one to give up. In the lead, Alex Carella is loving his new boat, building his lead over Al Rubayan to five seconds. Further back, Francesco Cantando of Motorglass F1 team is giving chase to Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden in fifth position as the two lock horns heading toward the northern end of the course. Sean Torrente still giving chase to Thani Alcamzi. The American's dramatic rise up the field seems to have been halted for the time being. Ninth place, Ahmed Alhamali continues to pursue Torrente. Stromoy is 10th, Marsalek 11th, Philip Roms 12th, Codwells, Cermak, and Brigada 13 and 14. Corella is on course for a record third Chinese Grand Prix title in a row here as he laps the back markers. Former Grand Prix winner Ivan Brigada in his new Codwell boat in 14th position just behind his teammates. Trouble for Shiap. he's been dropping off the pace and now he's pulling out of the race. That's a blow for CTIC China, but they still have Liu Zhang out there. No change in the top five, Corella, Al Rubayan, Celio, Stark and Anderson. There we see the view from Al Rubayan's cockpit. Corella isn't even in sight of the Kuwaiti anymore. But there's bad news for Al Rubayan who was judged to have jumped the start and will have to do a drive-by penalty, dropping him down the field. That is a cruel blow. Celio, Stark, Anderson and Alcamzi race past the Kuwaiti. Sammy Celio moves up to second position, a win here, just one boat away. What a performance from Eric Stark. Last year's rookie is now running in third among some of the most talented and successful F1 H2O racers in the world. Francesco Cantando runs out of luck. The Italian veteran and 12 Grand Prix winner is out with engine problems. Let's take another look at the start of the race. Al Rubayan judged to have jumped the start. There it is again. The start is judged not from movement off the line, but from the moment the engine turns on. As the boats get to the commitment boy, a collision between Benevente and Cantando. There it is from Benevente's on board. Honestly, I don't really know. I, it was in the start, in the turn number 
one, I turned, I was going already straight, and I was hit by Francesco. He didn't saw me, uh, it happens in the races. Absolutely no problem. He didn't saw me, and this is normal. Bad luck today, it's racing. I was... The next I thing. Oh, I really suck. Even because that uh, was a problem also for me. Now back in the 18th lap of the race, Alex Carella is comfortably in the lead. The two-time defending world champion rarely loses from pole. Daniel Kamzi in fifth, trying to push on Anderson while fending off the aggressive Sean Torrente. Torrente has put in some hard work all race, moving up from 15th in the starting grid to sixth by lap 20. But Daniel Kamzi is not budging. Fending off the man from Miami as the two enter a long and arduous fight. Al Kamzi ducking and weaving. Torrente trying to find some space to pass. Jonas Anderson of Sweden in fourth position behind Celio, lapping Zhang Ziwei, the only Chinese driver out there. Liu Zhang is in 13th position, and his CTIC China teammate Philip Xiap can only watch from shore. Lap 26, Eric Stark in third position, by far his best ever F1 H2O race so far. And the former F2 champion seems to be getting quite comfy in the F1 H2O series with Team Nautica. Bartek Marshoek keeping the Motorglass team alive in eighth, putting in a solid race. Oh no, Jonas Anderson is out. Yet another disappointing result for the Swede. That leaves his teammate Jesper Force, the rookie from F4, who is doing well in 12th position. The positions, Corella, Celio and Stark form the top three. Then Alkamzi moves up to fourth after Anderson's exit. Trouble now for Sammy Celio. The two-time world champion is slowing down as teammate Philip Roms passes him, as does Eric Stark. That puts Eric Stark in second position. This is a big surprise. Celio now really off the pace, just trying to finish the race. Now it's Alcamzi in third behind Carilla and Stark, with Torrente all the way up in fourth and Alhamali fifth. There we see the two-time defending world champion Carilla lapping another two-time world champion Celio. Meanwhile, Bartek Marsowek quietly moving up to fifth and putting in a solid race in his fourth year on the tour and his 10th Grand Prix race. It's the last lap and nothing looks like it's going to put a damper on Corella's party. He's been flying out there and dominating from start to finish. There it is, Alex Corella makes it two out of two this season as the Qatar team celebrates. But the big surprise is Eric Stark finishing the race runner-up and Daniel Kamzi also makes it on the podium. Torrente finishing fourth, Marshoek fifth, and Roms sixth. Great result for the young Finn. Alhamali retired with just two laps to go. Arubayan makes two with four points. I really enjoyed the race and I had a very good start and then I just tried, you know, to go as fast as I can all the time and had some luck with some people who couldn't finish but I'm so happy to be second. I don't know why they give me a, a drive through. I didn't make any jump start and they said you need to go there. Not my problem if they are sleeping. Um, we had everything falling apart, I had no radio, I had no power steer in the last 10 laps, which is my worst nightmare because you can see these guns aren't that big. So we were really happy to get the fourth coming all the way from back there. It's in one piece, we got some points, next one we go. There's the results for the China Grand Prix, 20 points for Corella, 15 for Stark, and Celio salvages three points. Very happy to 
start uh, from last uh, from 10 position and I get in the course what I told you before the start I'm very happy I finished the race uh, third or second I don't know but I have good uh, fight with another team all the races I'm very happy today with the finish second the world overall standing sees Alex Carella continue the perfect defense of his world title with 40 points already opening a 25-point lead over Shiap and Stark with three rounds to go. That's good. I mean, it's the third year that I win, uh, I win here. I won my first race, uh, Formula 1 race in 2010 in China. So uh, it's really cool. Yeah. Nice feeling, especially this place, a really lucky, lucky place for me, triple position and three victory in three years. So what a fantastic place. Thank you. That ends another thrilling event in Liu Zhu. See you in round three when the UIM F1H2O World Championship heads back to Qatar.